So, hey folks, Jayhook here. Uh, so we've got a challenge here. The challenge posted by Freethinker is to uh, warp to all the planets in the Kerbal system, do a system tour with, um, well, with within a certain time limit. Um, basically, as fast as you can, do it in about 10 minutes or less. Uh, so I got here uh, fast sh fastest ship I could make um, for the challenge here and um, timer starts um, when we are in low Kerbin orbit uh, launches are nothing special apparently um, so we're not gonna launch this one we're gonna cheat it into orbit we're gonna use the cheat menu to set our orbit to low Kerbin orbit and then as soon as we are in orbit the timer starts um, you'll see it up in the upper left hand corner I've also got a timer here inside the capsule uh, we're not going to do this run inside the capsule. That would be super awesome. Um, I might do that at some point. I'm just doing all um, IVA uh, fucking all uh, IVA speed run tour through the planets. But for now, we're gonna make sure all our systems are go. We're gonna double check our clock once again. Time starts as soon as we are in orbit. Um, I recorded over I recorded this previously and then I'm recording my voice over it because I did not have my microphone on um, so you get to miss out on my wonderful commentary um, while I'm doing the challenge but here we go first target is the moon or mun whichever you prefer so we're gonna point at it and charge up the warp drive and as soon as we're facing it we're gonna take off a lot of time <laughs> on this speed run is actually spent um, turning, you know, just aiming at the target. Um, but I guess I, it makes up for, I, I make up for the time, I guess, in how fast the warp drive charges. I'm literally only waiting for the vessel to turn as opposed to waiting for the drive to charge. So it kind of works out. Um, the one that I'm using in this, I call it Yondu. Um, if you catch a glimpse of it from a certain angle, you might. You might you might understand why um, uh, it uses only uh, interstellar extended and stock parts uh, no parts from any other mods so uh, if anybody likes this craft I'll uh, go ahead and upload it on Steam there and you can download it from the workshop and you can also do a tour uh, right here I decided I wasn't close enough I think I think I wanted to be closer or maybe not no I think that was close enough there for, for Minmus. So I just decided, yeah, that's good. Um, I, I guess it wasn't really stated whether I had to achieve uh, low orbit around each body or if end orbit counted. So I did this speed run um, assuming that in orbit at all was valid and really only closed in when you know the, the planetary body didn't really fill my screen you know like it, it, when it was close enough that it like like that right there not really close enough you know so I went ahead and crept a little closer to it um, and now figured that was pretty much close enough gonna go ahead and shoot on across to Eve now we're a minute and a half in more or less I suppose um, there is going to be a time difference, I suppose, between the actual recording time for doing this and the actual game time, um, due to the game time being probably a little bit behind. It'll say, um, you know, it took less time than the recording will say it took, uh, just because, you know, the, the timer on the on the game itself stops when, when the game stutters or when there's lag loading, that sort of thing, so it kind of chugs in and out there. Um, timekeeping, I suppose, is better when it's in the green, not so much when it's in the yellow. Um, but uh, if you look at the timestamp there on when I start the, the mission uh, in the video and then when I end in the, the video and tell me, you know, what, what the official time is, if uh, this was considered complete or not. Let's see, we're heading out to Gilly. Radiators are glowing, but the craft is surprisingly uh, efficient. 197 gigawatts is the theoretical supply. Um, 
hovers there around half waist heat. Looks like uh, full charge, or um, while charging the, the, the warp drive, I think it says it can do it for something like 68 days straight, <laughs> which is a, there's a significant amount of antimatter on this vessel. <laughs> a, a lot. Uh, I actually dumped out all the lithium. It's got a uh, plasma wakefield engine, uh, which is actually really good with that antimatter reactor and some lithium. Um, it's a it's a viable engine. Uh, tons of I mean just tons of delta V, and it complements the ridiculous output of that reactor so well. Uh, I dumped all the lithium though to uh, conserve weight, to make this thing easier to steer. Uh, it's got plenty of warp power to um, overcome the weight of the lithium. It doesn't actually weigh that much, like 0.3. Uh, it's like 300 kilograms is really all that was on there, um, or maybe more. I don't know. Um, 6,000 units of, of lithium. It's like a ton or half a ton, one or the other. Um, but it made it a little bit harder to steer in the rear with that. The, the lithium tanks are actually in the rear, so I, I just dumped the lithium because we're not going to be using them. We're going to be using only warp drive for everything here. Um, honestly, with, uh, with how well the warp drives work now, I hardly even turn on the, uh, the impulse engine there, the sublight engine, if you'll call it. It's very, very rarely used. I don't use it at all in this uh, particular video, but uh, it's very rarely actually used in general in my games, unless I'm making a point to use it um, lately, anyway. <laughs> in, in the past, it was a very important, uh, very important aspect of the ships, but right now, I don't even turn them on. It's all warp drive. All right, we are heading to Ike after making our little encounter there with Duna. Go ahead and creep up on Ike. How you doing, Ike? Looking good. Looks like an Ike. And who is next? We zoom out and we head off to Jewel. Having covered the core planets, we are now making our way to the outer planets. Making, making pretty decent time. Looks like we're about four and a half minutes in. Making good use of that max speed button. And we are rolling in on Jewel. Look at it glowing all green there. Alright, so we drop out of warp and we take a look at where we're at. And we waste a lot of time zooming in. <laughs> a ton of time zooming in. And we look at this and we're like, you know, we could be a little closer, maybe. Yeah, yeah, we could be a little closer. So we get a little closer to Jewel. And we decide that's close enough. That I, I decide that's close enough. That's that's plenty close. <laughs> Fire up that engine and we head off to Lathe. Lathe's looking good this time of year. Val is our next target. Oh, look at that. That's pretty. That's real pretty. And we've made our encounter there with Val. No time to waste though. We don't even take a second look because we are going to get plenty of plenty of Val here as we have to orbit it at sublight speeds. Or no completely orbit it, kind of curve around it, if you will. Make a, make a, you know, several point turn. <laughs> because Tyler was hiding, hiding there behind it. Uh, but we get clear, we make our final turn, and we don't even wait for a full alignment, we just 
we just use gravity and and the massive torque on the ring and it just pulls us right into alignment we zoom right into that tylo <laughs> and we're like you know it's not quite close enough there we go that's close enough that's better okay who's next we got bop on the list let's go ahead and say hi to bop we have to do a complete 180 here but that's okay, we're at 6 minutes 50 seconds, doing okay. Zooming off some more. Uh, all the red, by the way, makes this thing go faster, if you didn't already know that. Um, definitely, definitely making it red makes it go faster. The blue, you know, you see it from behind, it's going away from you really fast. Right? No, I don't know. <laughs> I think you would just see more red. <laughs> Alright, heading to pole. It's not a very long trip. And that looks like a pole. And our final destination here is Elu. So we point at Elu and we prepare to cross the vast void that is the outer emptiness. Making full use of that max speed button. I, mean, I noticed that I'm off alignment a little bit from this particular encounter, so I uh, drop out of warp early, and we're orbiting, but I mean, that is a massively high orbit. We can do better than that. So we, we creep this one down just a little bit. And right about here um, is actually the closest we can get. Um, I can't I can't get these little little Kerbal guys any closer than this uh, using the warp drive because it just won't let me fly at the... Oh wait, no, 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 this isn't the closest I can get. Um, I actually do get a little bit closer than this. Because that's just too far away, I decide. So I, I get lined up there. out of orbit right about there. And at this point, I try for one more or one or two more jumps, but unfortunately uh, I'm unable to warp any further than this. Get the message that I can't warp into either. I even try to aim, you know, away from the planet. Not completely away, but like, you know, at an angle off to the side and doesn't uh, doesn't quite get the job done. So right about there, I decide. Okay, it's still under a mill. It's still a tight orbit. You know, I'm there. It's an orbit. Looks like an orbit. It's about a million on that end. Anyway, it's a stable orbit. And we're at uh, 9 minutes and 45 seconds on the clock. Right there. You lose in my front window. And that was the grand tour of the Kerbal system in under 10 minutes. Thanks for watching.